everybody. Thanks for joining me today. My name is Steve Elmy, the host of Homegrown Hunter TV. Now today we've got special guest Steve Nicholson from the Canadian Wild Turkey Federation. Well, Steve, thank you very much for taking your time to come out here and visit us at the Homegrown Hunting TV. I, uh, I wanted to bring you out and introduce you as Steve Nicholson, the director and uh, of operations for the Canadian Wild Turkey Federation. Um, now, from my understanding, you guys started, it's 2015 now. When did you guys start last spring? What, what time of year did you guys start the organization? Steve, well, first of all, thank you for having me out here today to have a chat with you. Uh, the CWTF was established back in March of 2014, so we're fairly new on the block. Um, we, we, we've had some great success in our first year so far. Yeah, well, uh, I've heard a lot about it. I mean, I, I've got my own following on Facebook and stuff, and there seems to be a lot of those hats floating around. So obviously there's banquets happening. There's, uh, are, are they branches or chapters, or what, what do you guys call them? We, we call them local chapters. So as part of the CWTF, uh, in order to have an impact on your local community, we'll set up established chapters in that area. Okay. Uh, these chapters will host a uh, fundraising banquet every year. As well, they can do additional fundraising activities throughout the year. And a pro part of those proceeds stay right in uh, their accounts locally to be used for local activities, habitat projects, okay. uh, youth outreach programs, uh, and a number of other things. Now, I do know that a portion of everything, maybe this is uh, kind of confidential information. I'm just curious because I've held a nonprofit organization group or a chapter in the past. And I know that a portion of that uh, money goes back to the big organization. Some of these could be in the U.S. This is a 100% nonprofit organization in Canada. But what kind of funds stay in the chapter? So if we say raise a thousand bucks, eight hundred dollars stay in the chapter, well, or is a is there a set percentage on that? Currently, we're operating with a set percentage. Okay. Um, in our initial years, we've decided to start with uh, a twenty percent kickback of net uh, profits for those banquets will stay locally within the chapter. Okay. Uh, it, it's a fairly low number at this point. But the, the other funds have to keep you employed so that they can keep pushing on more chapters. Exactly. So that makes sense. In the early stages, obviously, it costs money for me to do my job and, and travel across the country to uh, to help host these chapters or these banquets. Yeah. Um, so we do have administrative costs associated with it. As we grow and as our, uh, our revenues increase, our full intent is to leave more money with the local chapters. Our philosophy is if, if I don't, if we as an organization don't leave um, monies with the chapters, that money is, is their tools to do the, uh, the activities the that we stuff. want them to do, right? yeah, which, yeah. which essentially is what we're all about. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I went to a local chapter this May. Obviously, you were the host of the event, and um, I did do my part by buying some auction items and got on the microphone and encouraged some guys to put some money out and help you guys. And knowing that that money is staying local to help our local chapters is fantastic. And I think it's a great opportunity. That's why I thought it would be great to have you on here. Yeah. But tell us a little bit about the chapters and, you know, where these provinces are. I know that you guys are like countrywide or not. Yeah, literally Canada countrywide. Wide, yeah. 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 And uh, some are strictly focused towards province wide, but you're handling all of Canada. How many chapters are there so far up to date? We're only a year and a half into your organization. Yeah, currently we're sitting at, uh, at 10 chapters in our first year. We've got another four or five on the block uh, that's in the works of being established as we speak. Um, looking from the east, east to west, we have uh, four chapters in Nova Scotia, which uh, funny enough, they don't even have a turkey population that's huntable. There's a few birds around. Um, well, it shows their efforts of wanting to get the chapters going. Exactly. To fund and, it and keep releasing birds or whichever they're doing out there to help grow the population. Right? Yeah, and, and not to get off topic, but we are a Canadian wild turkey organization, but we're about a lot more than just turkeys. And we can talk about that a little bit later. Okay. Um, moving a little further in New Brunswick, we have two chapters established currently, um, with another one on the block looking to come on board. In um, Quebec, we've got a former chapter. Uh, in Montreal that are in process right now of kind of reestablishing their committee so we can get that back up and running again. Ontario has got four chapters currently with another four on the block looking to start up for 2016. Awesome. Um, Manitoba, they're, uh, they've are they got a group together that's working to, uh, to put together a committee and start a chapter there. And as far out as uh, BC, there's a chapter that's been uh, established we're hoping to have their first banquet in january 2016 awesome love to hear that it's coast to coast and it's getting that type of traction 
you know, and as I was saying, I'm being on Facebook, I'm seeing the hats pop up in the banquet photos, and I've seen the stuff. We had a couple hundred people show up at our banquet, and the funding is going to a good cause. But uh, when I look at um, what the organization is doing, the people that you guys have got wrapped up, like I know that uh, we were just speaking to uh, Mike, sorry, not Mike, it's Kent Mickey. Mickey, did I say that Kent right? Mickey, Kent Mickey. Kent yeah. Mickey. He's a wildlife biologist from, I believe he lives in Manitoba, and we were just talking to him today. And uh, in fact, Steve's got some notes that uh, he may have to refer to because we wanted to make sure that we were given solid information. So um, just, you know, there was a release in Manitoba. You know, what was CWTF's part in releasing those birds and potentially how many birds were released? Right. Well, um, at the time coming on, um, on board new as an organization, they had already established and planned and, and done some trap and transfer um, revolving around this release. But they're trapping uh, local birds and releasing some... Supplies. They are. They're trapping local birds within the province and releasing them in areas where they want to establish and, and expand on the local populations. Maybe you a SWAT? Take yeah, I mean, this fly has been much <laughs> Maybe we should be the Canadian Wild Fly Association. <laughs> I was about to give you a SWAT here. I'm like, oh, sorry, man. It could be a bust on the side of the head. Yeah. That's a good thing, though, right? So, right, I mean, right. releasing those birds and... Uh, so... CWTF, he's there again. CWTF um, came on board as volunteers. We had um, many of our members there as volunteers during the release. It was a great experience for them. Yep. Uh, we look forward to another uh, release coming in 2016 at a couple sites. Okay. Um, this past March, they trapped uh, a total of about 30 birds, which they released in two different areas. Uh, in, we'll just say in the south central area of uh, Manitoba. Um, the idea is that there were some existing birds within those areas, a limited amount. The um, part of the program is they would trap the birds, they would hold them in pens within those same areas to make sure they were healthy and everything was good. What kind, what kind of holding time? Like, are we talking a couple of days or a month? I or? think they were a couple of weeks. Okay. You know, they wanted to uh, get them well fed, make sure they had a good uh, a good start. Uh, so they selected the areas they were going to release them. To revolve around farmland. <laughs> that There's that swan like, again. <laughs> he likes your clone yeah, or something. So, um, but they wanted to release them within farmlands, which increases their uh, their survivability. Yeah. Um, where they can get quick access to winter feeding and whatnot. Um, and and again, like I said, that improves their uh, survivability rate. So there's a very low mortality rate with the way that they did this. Yeah. And well, just before our conversation, you were saying about the success rates. I was curious to know some of the numbers that were available to the, the local CWTF chapters or potential memberships that want to actually sign on to this, knowing where this these fundings are going and stuff. And I wanted to know specifically, as a member, because I am a member of the mm -hmm. CWTF, um, what's the success rate not necessarily, well, I mean, I asked about the mortality, but the mortality is very low because of the fattening up and stuff that they do and holding them there. But when you release them, what are the chances of them actually breeding within the first year or two? So you were mentioning there was a successful story about... Yeah, it, it, it's actually a very successful uh, program that they did as as what they did is trapped and released adult birds only, right? So they're already established. They've already spotted one or two hens this, this spring so far. Uh, with a clutch of eight to ten uh, chicks with them already, or poults with them already. Awesome. So I mean, that's you know, success it's, in its it, own right there. Exactly, it's happening, and we saw this in Ontario when the birds were first established here. Um, it's a slow process at first, but as they get uh, their feet on the ground, it doesn't take long before their populations start to expand. Cool. So, what is uh, CWTF's involvement now? Ken obviously is a wildlife biologist. Uh, I do understand that uh, he run, or he's a co-host of the Trigger Effect television show you'll see in Canada. Um, you know, great guy. I've known him for a couple of years now as well. And he's really involved with the CWTF. I'm assuming that he's a part of the director's board or anything like that. Yeah, well, well recently, uh, right about the time of this release that was happening, uh, we were in touch with the guys from Trigger Effect, Dean Tremblay and Kent Mick Mickey. Uh, we signed a partnership agreement so that we're working together on different projects. Um, basically it's ammunition for you guys, you know, like, because Ken has got a position in his job. You've got national exposure on national TV. Kent is a fantastic guy to have that type of, uh, exposure for CWTF is fantastic. And I think it's just a great oppor opportunity for you guys to get more exposure for members to join on. Absolutely. They're like you say, I can't say it enough. They're a great bunch of guys. They were just down here in, in the tweet area, uh, this past spring where we filmed our first CWTF trigger effect hunt. 
which will do to air, I believe it's around the beginning of September of this year. And that's on Wild? That's on Wild TV, so okay. keep an eye on it. Uh, it's a great episode. I've seen a sneak preview on it, so it's, it, it was a, a very I was there when the bird out. come back. That's a big bird, too. Like, the one that you're talking about the birds that was there? Yeah, yeah he, that he was, was a big, cool. mature tom that we targeted, and, and everything Smoked worked them. out just fine. Yeah. Nice, nice. Well, it was a great opportunity to see that thing. And, and I know them guys from years past, they come down to one of those shows here locally in Ontario, and I was first introduced to Dean Tremblay and but uh, they're a great group of guys I think it's a great opportunity for the exposure to Wild TV and I know and I'm encouraging the viewers of this show to go on to the CWT app can you give us the website so they can go on and at least uh, join the membership yeah you can check us out uh, at uh, info at cwtf.ca uh, obviously www.cwtf.ca is our website uh, hook us up on Facebook we have our main Facebook page uh, every province has their own Facebook page. So, oh, he's back. so if you go on, <laughs> on Facebook, CWTF Ontario, CWTF Manitoba, et cetera, et cetera, you can, uh, you can kind of follow along what's happening within those provinces. Awesome. Awesome. Well, continued success. I'm going to touch base real quickly on what Rackstacker is doing specifically to raise funds for this, this, uh, this organization being nonprofit. Um, as most people know, I'm the Rackstacker guy as well as the host of the, the television show, but we have to redesign some of the packaging for Upland Turkey, but what I want to do is give back by making a specific blend for the CWTF. So anybody that purchases Rack Stacker, we don't have a name for it yet. I might even continue to call it the Upland Turkey blend, but um, it's specifically for planting in the summertime to feed your birds through the winter time. It's not a bait. It's not a feed. It's an agricultural planting that you plant at your farm to help the, the turkeys get through that tough winter. The, the food and the seeds that are available here actually stay above the snow line, allowing those birds to feed from the top of them and keeps them in the area. So that following spring, uh, in hopes that they stay within that area, we give you an opportunity to, to hunt the birds in the springtime. Well, that's great. We really appreciate that, Steve. We can use all the help we can get from, uh, from our local viewers and supporters. Um, and, and it's very important, like you say, to give those birds that feed through the hard winter months so that they've got something to survive on. You bet. And it's just going to grow our population and have, uh, it's a conservation effort that anybody can do. You can plant it just about anywhere, but it allows those people to have a better opportunity to, to view the birds, whether it be at the back window. I've got a spot, a, almost a three quarter acre plot at the back of my window so we can watch the birds in the wintertime. Anybody can do it. Whether you're a hunter or not, I encourage you to join the CWTF. It's a great organization. Steve, thanks very much for coming. Steve, thank you. you bet, Appreciate man. it. I also want to introduce uh, the HGH magazine. Steve Nicholson's past job was a culinary chef, if I'm correct. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. He used to be a professor at a local uh, college. He resigned from that job to come and uh, more or less help the organization for CWTF. And he also helped us out by writing an article in the Homegrown Hunter magazine. I encourage you to uh, sign on today. You can go on to hghmag.ca. And Steve wrote a two-page cooking article on turkey burgers. I think we called it Gobble Them Up or something like that. But uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a great recipe. In fact, I tried it this year when I shot my Tom. And uh, if you sign on, you get a chance to win some rifles. You also get a chance to win all education. This is not about plugging information or plugging sponsorships. The magazine is strictly youth conservation and education advancement for anybody that wants to read it. Um, it's not the long, I brought this and I shot that, and I, it's not about that. It's about what they learned in the field, and I will I will tell you the truth. Sometimes you're going to have a sick-to-the-stomach type feeling because they're not all about the success. It's just what you've learned from a hunt. Now, I lost a deer last year um, more because I missed the shot, and it was a, what about my biggest buck of the year. You'll see those stories in there as well. So sign up, hghmag.ca, for a subscription of the Homegrown Hunter.